so our final speaker this morning is Dr. Jorn Epping, uh, who's a senior project manager from Quix. Uh, as we heard from um, Yama yesterday, uh, Quix is developing integrated optical systems for quantum computing. Uh, and I'll hand straight over to you, Jorn. Thank you very much. Let me just share my screen. Last, uh, last talk before Gather Town. <laughs> Yes. Where you also where you also can catch me if you if you like. So I also will hang around there. So also a lot for the. <laughs> nice introduction by uh, author about uh, photonic quantum computing. Um, we are Quix. We built uh, integrated quantum photonic uh, processes. And um, if you're more interested in uh, what we're doing and you have further questions, just uh, give me an email or catch me at GatherTown or the Slack channel. Everything is fine. So, um, we are not from the UK, we are from the Netherlands, for a spin off from the University of Twente in Enschede. Um, we do still uh, have an office in, the, in one of the uh, incubators of, of the University of Twente, and right now have um, a team of, of nine people in total, uh, with the co founders uh, Hans van der Flecker and Yelmer. Animo, which you might have seen yesterday. And uh, Jan came uh, to Hans when he, when he uh, started a position in the University of Twente and asked uh, why he didn't use um, the low loss integrated photonic uh, platform that we have to, to, start for quantum, yeah, to start using it for quantum technologies. And over the time, yeah, we gathered more more funding, more people, and are now up to nine people. All of them lovely, and since this question is coming uh, quite often, some of us have a PhD, uh, and some don't. Uh, that that doesn't matter for us. So, um, what are you doing? We are also doing uh, photonic quantum computing, which is uh, non-universal quantum computing. And um, the main applications we see right now is uh, in machine learning and quantum simulations. And already, like um, like Orca already mentioned, one of the big advantages are that you don't need a big cryostat. Um, and the difference uh, between us and Orca, for example, would be that we build everything on uh, photonic integrated circuits, which allows for a high, high density of integrated um, uh, devices. And um, yeah, in our case, the we don't think of qubits. We always say it's Q modes, and that's the number of modes of photons that you can inject into into the processor. Um, yeah, one example here. Is of course uh, using ozone sampling for uh, molecular vibronic spectra. So, how do we imagine uh, such a system? And it's uh, was already covered. It's uh, you have photon sources. This is processed in a large interferometer. This interferometer is uh, completely reconfigurable. You can set uh, all the on-chip switches and phases just uh, by plugging in a, a computer and uh, measure uh, the output at the detectors that set us up at a high photon rate. So what happens when um, the photons uh, propagate through the interferometer? Um, they build up interference via the Hong Mandel effect and that increases uh, the over the propagation, and in the end, you uh, measure measure the photon output distribution. So what we do at Quix is that this is our uh, core technology. We know how to build large, and actually in terms of quantum systems, the largest around that are available. 
uh, multi-port interferometers at a low loss. So in total, we are talking about a, a fiber to fiber uh, loss that we have right now well below two, uh, 3 dB. Uh, that's what we what we have available right now, and I think um, that is, uh, in terms of integrated photonics, the best that you can get right now. Um, but we are also expanding our business, uh, and also let me mention that we already have sold a, a few of such uh, devices, uh, which is also not really <laughs> common for for many of the quantum. Uh, quantum companies. Um, but we also want to expand this and sell the whole system. So sources integrated with the uh, interferometer and, and detectors. And, but we are also happy to supply custom devices. So uh, when you want to, for example, have a subset uh, or different functionalities on the chip based on the low loss uh, technology that, that we are using, and uh, we also happen to, to do uh, custom, um, custom devices, which also is um, really nice because uh, it's, always, it's always a bit of uh, different work. You can always do new stuff. Um, so how does our quantum photonic processor look like? It's um, basically it comes to the box, it fits, uh, if you want, in a nine inch rack. It's, uh, fully packaged, it's plug and play. You have to plug in your computer, uh, install our software, and you can dial uh, any uh, unitary metrics you would like using our software. It's all fully software controlled, so our software. Um, you can basically set all the phases of the controllers right, just, just with your computer. And as I said, it's the largest uh, quantum photonic processor in the world right now. Right now, uh, we offer uh, 12 modes uh, at uh, yeah, the lowest loss available. And um, if you're interested in that, um, want to know more, uh, you can also have a look at our webinar uh, that we gave last year. Uh, hopefully this year we can go for a new product release with even more modes and an even more sophisticated chip um, but yeah, if you're interested, uh, have a look at the webinar uh, or, or contact us. Um, yeah. As I said, we also are interested in building everything. So integrated quantum processor, sources, detectors, and uh, the control software to really that you just have to dial uh, the uh, the metrics you want to process and uh, get the output of the detectors. And um, this is a, would be a system that is uh, ready for application development of, of our customers. Uh, so let me now say a few words about our uh, photonic integrated uh, platform. It's uh, based on silicon nitride. It has uh, losses, uh, or it now have losses of below 0.1 dB per centimeter, which is, as I said, the best that you can get right now. Um, and it's a mature technology uh, right now developed at uh, Lionix, which is also within walking distance and is very good for, for good communication. Um, and it has a wide transparency range. Um, that means that we can integrate with standard telecom uh, devices. Uh, everything working at 50-15 is perfectly fine and everything is very mature. But right now we're also busy uh, translating this to, to the quantum dot wavelength uh, where the best photon sources are available. And we think that we will also achieve similar results there. So here, have a look at the at a, our typical structure that we use. That's the uh, double stripe geometry, as we call it here. You see two stripes of silicon nitride under the um, electron microscope and it's embedded in, in the silica. In the silica cladding, and this helps. This uh, helps to really get a low losses and b also a very good fiber chip coupling, which is essential because we cannot uh, we cannot lose many photons. 
So to give you an impression, this is our, how a typical chip of us looks like. Um, our logo on it, of course, and um, many thermal optic units to control it. So the 12 mode that we have right now uh, has uh, in total 160 um, tunable elements that are all uh, be, being controlled uh, with our software. And this will be, yeah, this will be increased in the next next month by, by I think, nearly doubling it, or, or no more than doubling it. Um, then this has to be, uh, in order to be useful for the for our customers, it has to be fiber coupled with a fiber array. And also here you see it's fully uh, packaged. It's uh, wire bonded here you also see the electrical drivers um, to control all of these elements and all this at a temp stable temperature um, to achieve the good, good fidelities that, that we have right now for the maximum of 99 uh, percent yeah this then is and this is how the uh, how it actually looks like in the lab uh, this is uh, actually in the lab of the university of twente We'll do photo measurements, but right now we are also busy with uh, setting up our own uh, quantum lab, um, where we, within a European project called Focusing, where we uh, collaborate uh, with, um, um, for example, the group of Fabio Scarino in, in Rome, who's a consortium leader. Uh, developing uh, machines and one we'll build in our lab uh, with a single photon source that we just recently bought um, to really have an on-site uh, full system operating and that that will start operating uh, by the end of the year. Uh, right now we are waiting for all the components uh, to arrive and um, yeah. COVID didn't help in terms of delivery time. We also were, uh, work in close, oh, I'm sorry, uh, in close collaboration with the uh, University of Trento and other universities. Uh, we have business partners with uh, a strong ecosystem here in the Netherlands with Ionix um, developing the, the lowest loss uh, photonic integrated circuits. Uh, theory partners like uh, Q Co located in Amsterdam and Fix the Photonic Assembly uh, Company that's also just within walking distances of our office. We are also strongly connected in the quantum like the quantum industry consortium, very F, uh, active EPIC member and also uh, in the Dutch quantum delta where we are really well connected. So we are embedded in a, in a strong ecosystem. And yeah, like <laughs> all the others, also we would like uh, to expand our business. And for this, uh, we are also looking for uh, photonics engineers, software and firmware engineer and quantum uh, photonics experts. And we are happy to achieve, uh, to, uh, to get um, Uh, this is interesting for every level, entry level, senior level, and even uh, the opportunities for, for team leader level, as we want to uh, develop into several branches. If you're interested, uh, just send an email to info at uh, and we'll, we'll find a position for you. So don't hesitate uh, to contact us. And um, with that, I'd already like to, to thank you. If you have a question, write me an email. As I said, I will be in Gathertown. And I believe we also have some time for some questions now. Thanks very much, Jorn. Uh, you're right, we've, we've got time for questions and we've got questions coming in as well. So, uh, so uh, I'll just start. The, uh, the first question we have is, do you get a lot of crosstalk between your thermal optic devices? Um, Um, yes, there's crosstalk, of course. I mean, uh, apparently uh, that's someone that worked on the platform, huh? but that's uh, one of our core IP, that how we handle the crosstalk. 
we can say that uh, how we do it, the, the, cross, the thermal crosstalk is uh, not a problem. As you said, we achieve uh, overall metrics, uh, fidelities uh, of yeah, up to 99% and uh, yeah, depending 95 to 99% is what we achieve. Right. Uh, to, to kind of follow up on that, uh, there's a question. It, it might be a bit personal, but do let us know. Uh, it says, how, how are your devices usually fabricated? Is it femtosecond laser writing or another method? Um, <laughs> so, no, it's not femtosecond laser writing. Uh, certainly not. Uh, with femtosecond laser writing, you wouldn't uh, achieve the uh, density of devices we are, that we need, that we are aiming for. Uh, no, this is all done uh, doing uh, lithography and etching, and that is done on yeah, in the clean room that is also here in within walking distance from from our office, and that's that's very important. Yeah, I imagine that's a big part of the kind of R and D cycle. Yeah, produce something and test it quickly. Okay. Uh, next, in terms of hiring, are you by any chance looking for undergrad students for internships? Or is it just kind of massive? Oh, if you're looking for an internship, we are also happy. Um, I think uh, just also send us an email and uh, we see if we can find a, a spot for you. Uh, so okay. we have regularly internships. So again, it's a case of kind of interest and attitude rather than kind of qualification. Yes, I, I would say so, yes. Awesome. Thanks. Um, there's, uh, next up is... What's the largest interferometer that Quicks intends to build in the short term? That's a lovely question. Mm -hmm. And the answer is, of course, as big as possible. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> right? Um, no, um, but we're hoping to go uh, for, uh, in terms of processor, in terms of uh, modes, to a number within three years where we can uh, show a quantum advantage of the platform. Yeah. So then we're talking about an order of magnitude within three years. We want to uh, say something like 50, photo, uh, 50 modes. Yeah. Uh, I have my own question to that. Do you expect it to be a, a roughly linear thing? Or is it a case of there's a few problems in the way that once they're solved, you can double, say, the, the number of Q modes you've got? Uh, with the number of Q modes, it uh, always goes square with the number of components. And also the real estate of the of the chip. Um, so we are we envision that uh, with our current roadmap, fifty is, is is possible. And after that, yeah, we are, we have ideas how to go beyond that. But uh, we have uh, right now a straightforward solution for up to fifty, which that we can already uh, fabricate, and that we'll do so uh, as soon as possible. Okay. Well, that sounds exciting. Then. Yeah. Hear <laughs> okay, about that soon. Um, there's a, there's a last one. I'm, uh, I'm not too sure kind of what angle it's getting at. There's, uh, it says, uh, can you elaborate more on how information can be encoded using photon polarization? Uh, oh, but... uh, is the, the kind of follow-up to it, I've been thinking on how this could be used to improve policy making in reinforcement learning. Okay, uh, so our wavecut structures are highly birefringent, so it's, uh, it's typically only supports one, one polarization. So you would have to do polarization splitting before going to the processor. But I, th I think I'm happy to, to, um, to discuss it also uh, in the Slack. I think this needs more interaction. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe that's a more of a kind of interpersonal kind of conversation that's easier to have back and forth. Um, will you be in the gather town uh, in a moment? I will. So maybe that's a great chance to, to kind of actually not really long science out. Um, so I, with that, I think we'll we'll break for lunch. So thank you, Jorn, again for that really interesting talk. Thanks uh, for having me here. <laughs> well, it's, it was our pleasure, really.